You're watching Capital City Sunday. Now to a bill we've been following for several months now. In December, Republican Senator Joan Balwig joined the show to discuss her bill to extend postpartum Medicaid coverage for low-income new moms to 12 months. Current state law limits that to 60 days. Now we're told the bill would impact more than 5,000 women in Wisconsin, and it did clear the Senate with bipartisan support, but never got a vote in the assembly. Madison Rio spoke with an advocacy group about the bill, and she has why they say they'll keep pushing, even though, barring special circumstances, the legislative session is likely over. Volunteers and staff at March of Dimes, Wisconsin have a mission to create what they believe would be a better health care environment for Wisconsin's moms and babies. A bill that aims to expand postpartum Medicaid coverage for low income new moms cleared the Wisconsin State Senate in the fall with bipartisan support. But lawmakers in the assembly never took it up, even though it had assembly co-sponsors from both sides of the aisle. Now, the session is officially over and advocates who supported the bipartisan bill say they're disappointed. Volunteers who work with March for Dimes include medical professionals who see firsthand the impact pregnancy has on women and their families. That includes Dr. Alicia Sprecher, who tells me many mothers need longer than the current 60 days allotted for postpartum Medicaid, especially if their birthing situation isn't straight from a textbook. These families are struggling with babies that are sick. In December, a few months after the bill passed the Senate, Republican Assembly Speaker Robin Voss appeared on our program and indicated that the bill was likely not something the Assembly would take up. The taxpayers of Wisconsin pay for the nine months when the mom is expecting a baby. It pays for time after the baby is delivered, and there are some who want it to go for the mom all the way until she is at 12 months. That's just too long. We at the time, Voss said the expansion program would be a duplicate of a federal one that already exists, Obamacare, and that postpartum women living in or near poverty qualify for Obamacare for free. So why would we take a program where they qualify for free, where the state of Wisconsin doesn't have to pay anything, and have the state of Wisconsin pay a huge share of the cost to extend those benefits when they've already got them? It doesn't make economic sense for Wisconsin. March of Dimes volunteer Emily Kittle, who advocates alongside Dr. Sprecher, says the speaker's December comments highlight a common debate against the extension of postpartum Medicaid. But she says while it's true they qualify for Obamacare, some new moms may not have the physical or mental capacity to fill out that paperwork and complete what's needed to ensure that coverage. You're tired, you're taking care of a newborn, you're taking care of a medically complex newborn, you're suffering from hypertension or cardiac disease yourself, or even worse, you're suffering from postpartum mental illness, which could even include psychosis. So how uh, is that individual able to fill out the paperwork, go online, call, do all the things that um, would ensure that they have that adequate coverage? Right now, a majority of states have passed legislation that expands those benefits, including in states that are Republican controlled. This isn't the first time this legislation has been introduced in Wisconsin, and advocates say they will keep trying to push lawmakers like Voss to get the legislation through the legislature and onto the governor's desk. March of Dimes and other health advocates are also working to encourage lawmakers support of other legislation that would broaden paid family leave. Republicans have rejected similar proposals in the past. That was Madison Rios reporting. Madison, thank you. This past week, the Joint Finance Committee rejected most of the literacy curriculum recommended by the State Department of Public Instruction. DPI wanted the committee to approve 11 early literacy curricula for kindergarten through third grade. Instead, lawmakers approved only four. Those are recommended by the Council on Early Literacy Curriculum. School districts can still use other programs to teach students how to read, but they'll only get partial reimbursements if they use one of the approved four. This is a shift in how schools teach students to to read, teachers will now focus more on phonics. State Superintendent Jill Underly is calling the committee's vote a quote missed opportunity. She says she thinks this will limit the potential impact the changes will have to how Wisconsin students learn to read. On April 2nd, voters will head to the polls for Wisconsin's spring election and includes local races and the presidential primary. The ballot also features two Wisconsin constitutional amendments. If the first referendum question passes, it would ban private donations or grants from being used to help fund the election process. There is some history, um, especially in the 2020 election, of uh, private uh, funds being 
used of basically private grant funds uh, being provided to uh, different municipalities to be used to help finance uh, costs related to elections. The second question would enshrine that no one other than an election official may administer elections. Wisconsin state law already requires it. On Wednesday, President Joe Biden made his second visit to Milwaukee in just three months. He was in town to announce billions of dollars in infrastructure projects for local communities, including Milwaukee and Madison. In Madison, that includes a million dollars for the Perry Street Overpass Project. You've lived in and felt the decisions made decades ago. Today, today, we're making decisions to transform your lives for decades to come, and we're doing it all across America. Let's be clear. His visit was met with protesters who were demanding an end to the violence in Gaza. The group, organized by the Wisconsin Coalition for Justice in Palestine, took the opportunity to express their frustrations over the handling of the war between Israel and Hamas. The group was highly critical of the president's history of sending aid to Israel and demanded a permanent and immediate ceasefire. And Republicans blasted the president's visit. Congressman Brian Stiles said, quote, the reality of President Biden's America is the opposite of what he wants you to believe. Stiles criticized border policies and hit him on the economy, saying Wisconsin families continue to be crushed by an unaffordable cost of living and a rising national debt that has resulted from the administration's addiction to reckless spending. Well, that is it for this edition of Capital City Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, if you have any interview suggestions or questions for the show, feel free to email me at smaslerdonar at wkow.com. But that is all for now. We'll see you back here next week, same time, same place.